Hello and welcome to this video on organic computing. The next step in high power supercapacity computing is quantum, but this is arguably a long term future, the next big break that we have not yet achieved. Despite having been able to demonstrate the efficacy and viability since 1994, like so many other terms in the biotech industry, organic computing is a catch-all term for the way the system behaves, not necessarily that is made from organic matter like cells and DNA, but more complex structures which would require something like this to achieve modest levels of organization and function. Organic computing is seen as the future of technology, especially portable devices or those that will receive considerably rough treatment and be without access to electricity. This could be something like the color changing skin tattoos used to identify blood glucose levels. It can get more complex. Think about how some molecules will spontaneously form into shapes. This is a consequence of the chemical structure, the same way they can unform after the circumstances that allowed it go away. This kind of self-forming and dismantling is a case of organic computing. At the extreme end of this, is something called autonomous computing. This is mainly seen as the technique for creating optimal computing systems and is the long-term goal as it can apply both algorithms and adapt to the larger picture. To get from where we are now to complex, self-assembling things in the far future, we need to start with simple single units. This is the concept of self-assembly. Historically, this came from studying molecular processes and how something like a cell could produce a protein. This was seen as a very successful method, and in a molecular system, it is a very, very simple process by comparison to the industrial production scene on a large scale. In one study, they were looking at the many systems available within a cell based on the components in the cell. One example of this is a capillary system. Another was designed to allow the self-assembly of components using two new parts that would find themselves bound together very quickly creating a new functional structure. The next step is when you have a product that can not only spontaneously assemble, but then unassemble. This reversion to its original shape is how DNA and RNA function. They open up, complete transcription, and then close again. There is an article that covers this where they examined a pair of RNA molecules that spontaneously assemble. This in turn is very much like the Yuri Miller experiments. Finally, there is the most complex of organic computing processes, and that is DNA guided. This last step is the hardest one, because it is more akin to programming and computer design of a circuit than it is working at the molecular and cellular level. The entire structure needs to have DNA coded with what could be considered Boolean and logical phrases such as if this then that, or in certain cases it could be complex arithmetic. This coupled with the various ways that a cell will express a gene with both the signal going in and out from DNA means the cell, in this case, must be designed with a particular process in mind. The upside to doing this is that it does allow for physical control and movement, 
you can effectively create a mechanical device based on this modification of the DNA and the way it functions in response to the environment. But this is the big challenge in organic computing. How do you design a set of genes and possibly an entire genome that knows enough about itself and the environment to function in response? This is almost a form of self-awareness. Think about a standard computer, if you will. Up to a point, it doesn't have any knowledge of the outside world. It can measure the temperature of the internal system, and if that exceeds a certain safety threshold, it will turn off. Conversely, the outside environment may become incredibly hot and cause the computer to overheat, but the computer doesn't know why it is overheating. And this is where the difficulty of organic computing comes in. These systems need to be able to reason and that reasoning must be programmed into them. The whole system then needs to be able to adapt the behavior to accommodate this. It must be able to access appropriate genes or some other catalog of items it can call on to adjust to these outside influences. Researchers from MIT have taken several steps towards this by developing cellular machines that can perform simple operations, store the information, and then recall that information. This is somewhere between step two and step three, that being a simple reversible process and a complex adapting process. When the team took it a step further and designed a strain of E. coli that they had custom modified to form part of a computer model. These cells were able to exist in one state, but they were able to move between the states that they had a list of. This meant that although the cell was currently in one configuration, if circumstances changed, it could transition into another. It was able to do this using a customized genome that had sequences included in it that were carefully placed at certain locations. This allowed responses to chemical signals, a technique that has been used for a long time, but this chemical signal activated those short stretches of DNA that had been added in, meant that they could then come out of the DNA, be transcribed, and then have an effect on the outside environment or the cell. This last bit is where it gets very hard. Remember that it was said earlier that the whole process requires a signal going into the cell, interacting with the genome, and then coming back out again. This circuit can often be very complicated and very long. The example from MIT shows it can be done but that it requires drastic modifications and is quite difficult to achieve in terms of more complex outcomes. But this is also why DNA is appealing. DNA is tiny, about 2 nanometers, but it also has incredible storage capacity. One cell has the equivalent of 1.5 gigabytes of storage capacity, assuming the entire genome was used for that purpose. More realistically, it's going to be less. However, that does not exclude the benefits of being able to store so much information in such a tiny space. In the long term, it may well be possible to do this cheaply, effectively, and reliably. This means you can compile very complex procedures and protocols within a cell and in conjunction with other cells, it has the capacity to create complex procedures and outcomes without the need for the mass electricity consumption that comes with a silicon-based processor. 
Examples of this in application include things that you may not initially think of, but traffic management is one, where organic processes and the ability to think of it as an organic being actually is more sensible than thinking of it as an engineering or mechanical process. You then have cloud services where you need to be able to access and modify data on a large scale very easily. Then you have robotic systems. Think factories that are assembling and producing products that are otherwise hazardous in their nature or in a hazardous environment such as extreme heat. Having an organic underlying process would allow a large system like a factory to do so without having to expose a human to a dangerous situation. This also has applications to large self-managed facilities like Skynet or a city in general where the movements of people need to be accounted for both at the time and predicting future activities. And this would allow for decision making and, hopefully, effective decision making on an economical and effective basis. We've seen something like this before with the way ants move and behave. The entire nest works towards a common goal with what could almost be considered an overlying sentience from the queen and other similar ants within the colony that act as nodes that control everything and adapt on the go. This is because they are able to make decisions spread across a wide area. Hopefully in the future, organic computing can be extrapolated where swarms of robots, as an example, could be used to clean up the environment to help in hospitals and sterilization, to provide support and care when needed, and more. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions below.